well hello folks now i guess digital marketing strategy is one of the most interesting and searchable topic on digital marketing and i have seen a lot of people who are always looking forward to know if they can get a strategy to build their brand if they can get a strategy to make their life if they can get a strategy to earn some money and then clients are always looking forward to find the strategy if you have the strategy available then this strategy can really make your business successful but i guess it's like a secret sauce of success and no one can generate a strategy for you no one can generate a strategy for the brand but then as a digital marketer you don't have an option when you get to onboard a client you ask you to create a strategy when you get into a job the company asks you to provide some strategy and that's why we are always end up creating some strategies for these clients so if i walk you through the definition of marketing strategy it's a plan of action designed to achieve a long term or overall aim so basically it's going to be like a plan designed to achieve some goals for this client some goals for this project now i have a couple of options and then using these options we can or you can in fact create a marketing strategy which starts with understanding the business overview so before you think about making any strategy you have to understand the business of this client it's required that you ask all of these questions from a client starting with his business type what kind of business this client is running if it's a offline business online business if it's artificial jewelry original jewelry if it's a education institute exactly is the business type then the primary objective of business now usually clients are coming with three objectives They're starting with branding for attracting eyeballs then sales for products and leads for service based business but then you have to ask ask client what exactly is his primary objective then the current challenges now the reason why you need to ask about the current challenges is because without the challenge you cannot provide a solution you cannot make a strategy for this client i recently faced this issue with a client who was already getting around 10 leads from a radius of 5 kilometers and he wanted me to generate around 100 leads for one single day so it was like it was quite impossible to generate 100 leads for this client so even before i could have provided him a strategy i could have made a media plan i could have made a marketing plan for this client i said no i can't make 100 leads for you i just analyze the business i check the search volume and then i realize this is something which i cannot provide to this client so you always have to think about or ask a client what is his current challenge otherwise if you will onboard a project you will end up losing the project after the month's time then a value proposition what is this value that this client product is providing to the market the monthly marketing budget so oh my god this is the most frustrating questions for the client whenever you ask them what is your monthly marketing budget they just lost some in their minds they won't ask, answer you this question they don't tell you what is their monthly marketing budgets and then you have to like think about asking them a question which is all about the expected monthly leads so let's say if you if they tell you they're expecting around 100 leads in a month that means around 3 leads a day and if you have a cost per lead of around 1000 rupees then you simply multiply 100 to 1000 and then you make a marketing plan or a media plan which includes 1 lakh inr 100000 rupees as a marketing paid budgets then the current lead status how many of the leads are qualified leads it happens in google that the qualified leads percentage is always around 70 to 80% in facebook though sometimes people get this problem if they are running a lead generation campaign that they have the 50 to 60% qualified leads so you have to you have to check if you can really improve the qualified lead status so what you can really do you can have these questions added to a google form and then you can share the form to the client where the client simply fills up this form and all the question comes to you and then you decide if you can really work for this client so this all of these questions are going to give you some business overview or the objective for this client when we start any marketing plan or any marketing strategy we always write down business overview and the business objective so that this entire ppt that we are creating is quite clear with what exactly we are going to achieve for that particular business now once you have the client objective listed 
then it's time to look into the comparator analysis now you start doing the analysis of this comparator or this client for at least three comparators starting with uh, what is his uh, website then looking into the creatives looking into the google search ads looking into the facebook ads so you can get into google search or maybe facebook ads library from where you can simply get into the comparator ads then you look into the facebook and instagram followers and finally choosing the average or doing some media planning in fact keywords planning to find out the average bidding amount how much you have to pay if you want to win is compared to other competitors if you already have competitors who are winning the race then it becomes very difficult to beat those competitors sometimes you end up losing all the money just by ranking on top of the competitor ads so if you have a competitor report available then you know how exactly you have to uh, what exactly you have to do what kind of creatives you have to create what kind of ads you have to create and then once you have the competitor analysis report available then you can get into the market research and overview now the reason why it's important is because you have to understand the population of that particular uh, location first how many internet users you have in the location and also if you are having the search volume or not so maybe you have a client who wanted to advertise on google in a particular city let's say delhi but you don't have a search volume now in case of delhi it's going to be very unlikely that you don't have the search volume because you're talking about a location which is having two to three cr population but let's say you are going to target in a location where the customer search volume is not there or maybe in delhi also you are thinking about marketing something which people don't search on google if you don't have a search volume there's no point in running search ads in that market in that case you have to get into facebook you have to advertise over facebook if people don't search things or products on google you have to check out the average order value which is also called as aov just because in market sometimes if your product or your client's product value is very high than the competitor's average order value it becomes very difficult to sell those products so let's say if you are selling uh rubik's cube now there was a time when people were buying rubik's cube at the cost of 500 or 600 but right now this cost is dropped down to around 100 rupees 200 rupees and then let's say you have a client who is willing to sell his rubik's cube at the cost of 600 or maybe 800 then it becomes very difficult for you to find out those people who will buy these products also in indian market we don't have the customer very good customer loyalty at least in the retail business or at least in the streaming business so there was a time when people were really flocking for netflix people were interested in buying the netflix subscriptions but then you get amazon prime then you get hotstar then you get geo and then you'll see people switching their apps when it comes to seeing the free world cup seeing the free cricket matches so customers are not loyal for that particular zone also if i talk about e-commerce you won't find customer being loyal to even a big brand like amazon or a brand like mintra or maybe flipkart or maybe snapdeal there was a time when people were really buying things from snapdeal and misho and uh ebay but then you won't find customer being loyal to those brands so in the retail segment you don't find very high customer loyalty so you always have to provide something new you have to always provide something which is valuable to these clients then also you have to check two more things like if the people in that market are ready for prepayment in fact in today's time companies like amazon and mintra are providing the cod payment options people don't buy all the time using prepayment so you'll find a lot of people who are not gonna buy through prepayment even if they do but they won't buy from a new website they won't buy from a new client just because they are having the trust issues with the new brands just because you always find a lot of companies who are doing the fraudulent activities who are scamming people by taking money on behalf of e-commerce websites so that's why if you are having a new brand and this brand of yours is not willing to like provide products on cod which means on cash on delivery you can't sell those products in indian market also shipping fee is something which is available for free in the indian market so people have this habit of buying things for free in the indian market they won't pay for shipping fee so again you have to provide the shipping fee uh, as free 
even though you can add that shipping fee amount in the price of the product if you have margins over there but if you ask them to provide shipping amount they may end up not purchasing the items that's the reality of the market and that's why you have to do some market research if not from all of these tools you can get into a statista which is a website a really good website which can give you the analysis of any of the world's market then after market research we have to get into customer persona a customer persona is all about uh, making a persona making the plan or like a some information about the tg tg stands for target group so using this customer persona persona i'm sorry we are making we are mapping our actual customer within this customer persona so we are looking forward to check who is going to be our target customer in terms of the age range in terms of the gender in terms of his challenges so let's say if you are talking about making customer persona for a e-commerce artificial jewelry store the age range has to be somewhere in between 24 to uh, 34. In fact, 18 to 34 could be the right age range for artificial jewelry. The gender has to be female. Pain points could be not finding the right artificial jewelry. The target location could be tier A city. The customer interest has to be females who are interested in fashion industry. So that's how you have to make a customer persona and you have to get this customer persona approved from the client. Now, once you have the customer persona set, the next option is to create the media plan. Now, media plan is something which is always interesting for a client. The other previous points in this marketing proposal or business strategy or marketing strategy is to just make it look good. So client can understand, okay, now you know the business. Now you, he knows about the competitors and now he knows that you have done some market research for him. But then the thing which actually makes him to board you as a as a client or board you as a marketing agency or maybe a marketing expert is all about media planning now media plan is, a, is an actual plan which tells the client or which explains what are mar marketing platforms that you're going to keep for that particular business what channels you're going to keep is it going to be ppc sem social media marketing what all campaigns you're going to put in the marketing plan and also how much budget you're going to allocate for that particular media plan not only that this media plan also tells you what exactly are going to be the returns in terms of deliverables how many impressions you're going to generate for that particular brand how many uh, leads you're going to generate for that brand by the end of the month what would be the cost per sale for that particular brand so this media plan is something which actually tells the customer about the returns that you're going to generate for this particular business eventually it's all about generating the returns nobody cares how good you are in making all of these business strategies if your strategy is not going to generate the right returns for the client if it's not going to be listed in the media plan if you don't have the right uh, conversions if you don't have the right cost per sale no matter what the clients won't be getting on voted now so that's how you can make a digital marketing strategy a marketing strategy that can have all in each and everything you can have like slides for each and every category and then once you are done with the media planning part then you can start working on the project now this is something which is for members or for interns who have taken this project as a training course and here we have to do's for these members now when it comes to working on any project now, after making the strategy, you have to decide a project. And it happens a lot that you don't have a project available. In that case, you have to find out a project for yourself. Once you have the project available, so here in this uh, training, we are talking about a project which is a e-commerce jewelry store. We are talking about a Spring Tales jewelry store. So we'll be doing marketing for this particular jewelry store. And then we will be starting with the project planning sheet this project planning sheet is going to plan the marketing for this project it's starting with having the website link then the marketing objective then the market service requirement the type of banners needed target audience marketing duration now you can't ha really have this project planning sheet created if you don't have a website available so we need to have the website first we need to have the project first once you have the project available then you can make a project plan 
once this project plan is ready then you can start doing the keyword planning for the project keyword planning is going to tell you your actual keyword themes the keywords that are going to use for google ad account also the keywords for seo and eventually you're going to generate the average bidding amounts what exactly is going to be the cost for getting one click from google at least and then finally we make the media plan for the entire project the media plan that tells us about what exactly we are going to achieve if we apply all of these campaigns if we run all of these ads throughout the month or maybe throughout the quarter however before creating the project plan keyword plan and media plan it's important that we need to have a website first so this is a quick sheet through which you can understand what all are required to create a website in digital marketing anyways so i end today's video with this quote which says inspiration is the most important part of our digital strategy i'll see you inside the course